What's up, half a lift? <laughs> Oh baby, our Jeep is on jack stands. We got the rear in the air and we are ready to keep lifting. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome back to the project. Welcome back to our Rec J lift part two. We are gonna get the rear end lifted. So what I did so far was put it on jack stands, block the front wheels, make sure this baby doesn't roll anywhere. And uh, I went underneath this thing, I power washed all the dirt and grime out of it, and then I let this sucker soak in some PB Blast. All the axle joints, the uh, U-bolts, uh, you name it. I got the, uh, the bushings, leaf spring bushings, all soaked in PB Blast. I want to try to get this thing out uh, without breaking any bolts off. We know how bad it was rusted when we did the front end. So yeah, this thing's been soaking. We're going to go ahead and remove this rear end. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is take off these lower rear shock bolts. These are 18 millimeter. Quick way to get something off the vehicle. You got a nice taste of satisfaction. There we go. All right, I got my jack under the pumpkin. Just a few pumps to get the weight off of these leaf springs. Now I'm gonna come over here and I gotta remove these leaf spring bolts, these uh, U-bolts right here. As you can see, I have no rear sway bar bushings. Looks like the bracket completely rotted. So I'm just gonna cut this off right here so I can have easier access to these U-bolts. There we go, get out of here. I always save these U-bolts. You never know when you're gonna need a good U-bolt. Got to save this bracket so we can put our rear sway bar end links on. Well, here's a scary sign, guys. Trying to remove this bolt from this rear sway bar bracket, and uh, the inside collar is completely seized to the bolt. Now, if this is a little bit of foreshadowing with the rest of the bolts on the leaf springs, we're in for a long day. Hopefully that PB Blast soaked in there nice and good. Wow, it exploded. Gross. All right, we are over here on the driver's side front leaf spring bolt. Now these could be a bit of a bugger. You're gonna wanna soak these in penetrating oil like I did for uh, a few weeks prior to this and all day yesterday. These bolts go through this bushing and into a bolt welded to the body. A lot of times the bushing will grab on this bolt so it'll spin. Exactly like this. If the bushing sleeve is stuck on the bolt, it won't leave the bracket. So the collar of the bushing will be stuck. You won't be able to back the bolt out and you'll just have a stuck bolt in a bushing that will damage the threads. So you're gonna wanna just take this easy, make sure that the bolt breaks free from both the nut and the bushing. So here we go, we got a 21 millimeter on an extension right up through here. And first thing I'm gonna do is go in a little bit tighter, break the tension tightening this thing up just a just a hair and then I'll back it out so let's see I want to apply good inward pressure and then I'll hit it all right I broke the tension now let's back it out don't want to be chopping springs up today Oh, success. Thank you, Jesus. Oof. Oh, ho, ho. I just rode that wave of success when I got the other one off the other side. A lot of times people will just start torching 
this to, to break any rust bonds, but if you torch it, you will melt the bushing, and the bushing is what you need to keep that tension on that little, uh, that little collar in there. So don't go right for the torch for these things. Just try it without the torch first. You get better success. Two for two so far. All right, we are gonna remove the shackle bolts. Now to get access to that, you're gonna to wanna to remove this rear bumper end. Now, if you undo the screws, that should just slide out to the rear. Let's say you take them off properly. As you can see, I removed quite a bit of metal. Actually, I didn't. The rust did that for me. I just cut it nice and neat. All right, there is the upper shackle bolt. And here's the lower. We're gonna change out these shackles. They are probably rotten. So we're gonna attack this from the upper shackle bolt. And just leave the lower shackle on the leaf spring. All right, guys, same concept as the front. This nut is welded to the body. We're gonna wanna break the bonds of the rust. We're not gonna wanna break that bolt. So I'm gonna tighten it real quick. Broke some rust free. I'm gonna back it off a little bit. There we go, like a charm. Wow, I did not expect that to be that easy. All right, last one. Let's tighten it down a little bit. Watch the rust fall, and we'll back it off. Yes. All right, four for four, baby. It's gonna be a good day. It's gonna be a good day, Tater. Well, here we go. All right, guys, we got these ugly old flat leaf springs out. Went ahead and put the axle right up on jack stands. And now you can get a good idea of stuff you need to address under here while everything's down. Of course, we're gonna do this rear sway bar. Take a look at this, guys. The brake line down here just kind of crumbled. And also, this parking brake line, that is kind of shredded. And then check this out up here. We got some rust to deal with up on these upper shock mounts. This is kind of gross. You know what guys, now is the perfect time to do a rear disc brake conversion. So stay tuned for a conversion video, coming soon. All right, now we're under the Jeep, right under the gas tank, looking straight up. And you can see the upper rear shock mounts. Now these are always the worst part about doing an XJ lift. What happens is you go to take these out and of course they're stuck in the frame of the vehicle in the, in the unibody. Well, this bracket, as you can see, is pretty well rusted. So you go ahead and you try to back these bolts out of this rusty piece of crap and the bolts break off. And then you spend the rest of the afternoon trying to fight to get the studs out. What I do is I air hammer them out. Then what you do is you take a nice new bolt, you wrap some solder around the threads, then you string the solder through the hole, you pull the solder through the hole, and then the bolt will follow. Then you could actually put on a nice new lock washer and a nut. But I think I finally found a new, easier way to do all this. Thankfully, I found these parts online. This promises to make the job a lot less painful. Kick-ass Jeep parts made in the USA. Oh yeah. Here we go, make sure you wear eye protection. You do not want a chunk of 20 year old rust falling into your eyeballs. It's gonna, it's gonna rain rust in a second. Wow, that one came out. This one came out also. Wow. Three out of four. Not too bad. All right, safety glasses on. 
Air hammer hooked up. Get ready for the rust rain shitstorm. All right guys, check this out. We got ourselves a nice clean and painted rear end. Took the time, cleaned up everything really nice. As clean as I could get it before I go ahead and install these leaf springs. Let's go talk about these leaf springs real quick. All right, so here are my new leaf springs. These are Rough Country three inch leaf springs. In the event that these shackles are too small, went ahead and ordered some Rough Country lifted shackles. I might not need them, but who knows? I could probably put a beefier bumper on that thing and then end up using some lift out of that anyway. But uh, we're gonna go for three inch springs and stock shackles. What you could do, and I really don't like doing it, but this is another option. This is an Adelief setup. If you're gonna go through all the work taking off your leaf springs, you might as well just put new fresh ones on because it's a ton of work to get the Adelief going and to find out that your springs are rotted, your bushings are rotted. Uh, to put a leaf to old rotten springs and bushings is just a waste of time and energy, but it's a lot more affordable. So if you know you have good bushings, you know you have good springs, it could be worth your while to do the Adelief. These leaf springs are pretty decent. I got these off my two door. They're not rotted. Bushings are really good. Um, ah, what the heck. Since I have this all out, might as well show you how to add a leaf anyway. I'll just save this set for a rainy day. Soon as I said rainy day, it started raining. Again! Can't make this stuff up. All right, add a leaf time. Here is our leaf pack. Here is our Rough Country 3 inch add a leaf this is our center hole right there you want to make sure you line it up on the center pin so you have the correct side going here this is the front with the big bushing this is the rear with the small bushing they're not side specific but they do have to go on the right way as you can see this way wouldn't fit so i'm gonna orient the leaf springs just like this and first thing we have to do is cut off our old clamps. When you're using a grinder, I always want to make sure you got your gloves and your glasses, the three G's. Look here, made in Mexico. These babies were the original factory springs. And they're still in good shape. God, I love southern rust-free cars. There we go. Nice, decently clean leaf pack. Now we could just insert this one. Let's see, right here. You want them in size order. So this baby is going to go right here. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. It's so simple, you could probably do this with this, uh, this main leaf still on the vehicle, although I don't recommend it because you're gonna wanna check the bushings. So you gotta take them out to give the bushings a good look. Ironically enough, these bushings are good enough for me to do this in the vehicle, and the other plus was this leaf pack wasn't sagging, so it was still a good viable option for an add a leaf instead of replacing the whole leaf spring pack. All right, Rough Country leaf pack kit. Got ourselves some instructions, new center pins, nuts, and a bunch of clamps. Again, you want to line these up size order. Make sure that your new leaf spring uh, is on the right way. Again, they're not side specific. You just got to make sure um, it's facing the right way. Speedy clamps. All right, when it's nice and squared up and clamped down, just thread this baby on. There we go. All right, so Rough Country only gives you four clamps, so that's two per leaf pack. I'm gonna go ahead and do one right here. And I guess the other one, right where the old one was. 
All right. I'm gonna continue to administer the clamps. Are the girls c coming back? Administer the testicle clamps! Huh? What? And here, I'm gonna put this little notch. All right, and this old little notch. We'll see if I can slide this up from the bottom. When you are satisfied with how these clamps came out, go ahead and tighten this nut. One more tightenings, then just lop off the excess bolt. There you have it, guys. We got a Rough Country Adelie leaf on our factory leaf pack. Again, I only did this because the bushings were not damaged or worn or destroyed, and I had no sag on the leaf spring. So I guess I'm gonna clean these up, paint them, and I'll save them for another project. There we go. Sweet victory. All right, gotta put in the shackle. You want these little ear things facing forward, little flanges in the back. There we go. Not tight, but it ain't going anywhere. It's just what we want. All right, time to attach the spring to the axle. We got our plates, uh, painted them up, but also I enlarged the hole with a step bit. If you don't do this, it's a good chance it won't fit on this little screw right there. Also, I got new bushings and new rear sway bar end links, nice and new. And of course, I will leave a link in the description for these parts. And here are the new Rough Country U-bolts and hardware. Now these are Chrysler eight and a quarter U-bolts. Make sure you don't use the Dana 35 bolts. If you have a Chrysler eight and a quarter, they will be too small and vice versa. If you try to use Chrysler eight and a quarter bolts on the Dana 35, they'll be way too big. So we're just gonna go ahead and put these back on, tighten them down. And we're also gonna have to get on this sway bar link too. As we go, we want to make sure that pin in the leaf spring is centered in that hole right there in the axle, as well as the nut on that hole we just enlarged. There we go. Right there. Don't be afraid to use the jack to help get that pin in the hole. Right about here. I maxed out the usable range of the socket. Actually, look at that. I'm using a three-quarter. <laughs> but I'm just going to go ahead and lop off the tips of these bolts right here because uh, they're just superfluous. We don't need them. Bolt nugget. Don't forget, when you pull that side down, this side comes down too. So you gotta do them at the same time, sort of. All right. Axles riding on those leaf springs, nice and neat, nice and tight. Everything's looking good. Next thing we're gonna do is install the rear shocks. So we got the Made in the USA flag. This is supposed to face down towards us. He's got uh, rib nuts up here. I'm just gonna 
get these up to way in here where the shocks go I had knocked these out with an air hammer and then drilled this out a half inch just to give myself plenty of wiggle room let's go uh let's go weave this in I went ahead and power washed it knocked all the rust off painted all this stuff always wear glasses you don't want to get rust in your eyeballs just gonna weave this in it's hard for you to see because I got this evap line fuel pump uh, wires and my fuel line but just gonna try to put it in here straight and then I guess rotate it A little rotation if you will there we go you want to get it all the way to the side before you start your rotation to clear it and there we go look at that I can see the holes right here there they are right there peekaboo <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely the quickest I've ever aligned threads in this area. Look at that. Right, grab our shock. Slide it on. All right. Let the shock go right up into that little hole. All right. We're going to snug these down with a 13 millimeter. That is the size of the included hardware. And they gave me a torque spec. Make sure you torque them to 18 foot-pounds. That's a nut cert, so we're not going to go too tight on these. Just snug. You don't want to rip the nut cert out of that little bracket. All right, the passenger side, it's much easier. First, we'll slide on this uh, bracket. That goes in really quick. up and around all right guys there you have it all the components of the lift are in I'm just gonna worry about finishing my uh, rear disc brake conversion you can check that out in another video I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this and then we'll continue buttoning up this lift. Wow, there it is, Rec J on all fours. <laughs> Looking real good. Oh baby, this Cherokee is definitely sitting pretty. Let's take some final measurements. Let's measure the rear first. So again, this is sitting on Rough Country 3-inch springs. You can see it right there, still intact. Nice sticker, thank you Rough Country. And again, these shackles back there, those are stock shackles, just cleaned and painted. And let's zoom out here. All right, let's uh, get this right on the wheel well. And, oh geez, I don't know. Is that about level? Right there, sitting at six. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a big difference from two and change. Yeah, baby. All right, let's go do the front. Now, the front. As you can see here, we have different springs. I went ahead and I swapped out with the Rough Country coil springs. I tried to save a hundred bucks, but uh, my puck and old springs were just a little short. They were probably a little less than two and a half inches. Now we got our full three inch Rough Country kit going on. So, uh, well, yeah, one other thing is if, if, your, uh, if your sway bar end links are too long for your lift, you might punch out your body a little bit. So that's what I did and that was the, uh, the green light to just spend the hundred dollars and buy these new springs. And if you look real close, I used a cutoff wheel and just topped off the tip of that bolt, gave it an extra half inch of clearance. These are finally sitting on Rough Country Springs. We have a Rough Country kit all around. The link is in the description if you want a kit that sits just like this. So, all right, here we go. We are sitting at our final ride height and it is resting right about five inches. 
Pretty sweet, guys. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna give this baby one more look. I love this stance. To me, this is the perfect XJ stance. It looks factory, it looks stock, but we got a three inch lift on it. The tires, let's go check out these tires. I don't know if I ever showed you exactly what I got. These are stock Cherokee Icon wheels from 2000, 2001. The classics had the darker color with the polished rim. The limiteds had the silver all around. These are the limiteds because this vehicle <laughs> was supposed to be a limited. Put the limiteds back on General Grabber's ATX tires. These are 245, 75, 16s. Overall, they are about 30 and a half inches diameter, of course. And again, this front fender flare sitting five inches above the front tire. And this rear fender flare sitting about six inches above the rear tire. Just a, just a gorgeous lift. I think this is the perfect setup for an XJ. Shout out to Tinted Out Jeeps on Instagram. They have the same taste that I do. Nice shiny Jeeps, stock looking wheels with big tires. Just gorgeous. This Jeep sure did come a long way from being wrecked. All right guys, this Jeep is looking great. It's amazing what a little lift kit could do. Front lift and uh, rear lift makes this thing look like a whole new vehicle. So that is gonna conclude those videos, but the work is not done yet. Uh, I do believe I'm going to make a video on some post lift things to do to your vehicle. Some stuff you wanna consider after you do a lift kit to your Jeep to include brake bleeds, uh, transfer case drop, torquing everything down now that it's sitting at its proper ride height. You're gonna wanna probably change the diff fluid, all little stuff you wanna Grease all the bushings. I'll do all that stuff in an upcoming video. Uh, you might even want to consider a rear disc swap. Got everything going with a conversion video coming up soon. So, all right guys, that's gonna do it for my lift videos. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to stay tuned to the project, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Peace.